Hi friends! Today we are covering the newly released Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. I am thrilled to get into these products as these are truly unique based on what I've seen from them from Danessa's demos on IG and I'm happy that I was able to catch Danessa's Teach Me Tuesdays which she holds every Tuesday on IG Live and she featured the blurring balm powder, how to apply it, the different techniques she uses and basically Danessa going over why she created the product, what to expect from it and it was a great experience seeing other people's questions who were in the live and again having a a better understanding of this product. We'll go over product details as well as swatches. I have shades 5 and 6. We'll go through the demo and I have other Danessa Myricks products here on standby to make brief comparisons. I'm Alicia, an online coach, a lover and teacher of movement and beauty and yeah I like to talk about the makeups and when an intriguing complexion product rolls around I can't help but investigate. The Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder retails for $36. 18 grams of product or 0.63 ounces and it has a suggested shelf life of 12 months. I think what people found most intriguing about the product is the fact that it looks like a cream balm inside the pan. This is shade 5 but it does have this blurring powder effect. Well, you know what? I wrote notes while tuning into the live, so why don't we go into it? The Blurring Balm Powder contains Upsolite technology, which these, I believe, little spheres in the formula that soaks up excess oil throughout the day so that over a course of several hours, you still look fresh, soft matte, and natural, which people with oily skin was excited to hear about, and the fact that you don't necessarily have to touch up, again, because of the Upsolite technology which I think also exists in Linda Halber Cosmetics Blotting Powder. It says here it utilizes the same Upslight technology, but this is more of a traditional press blotting powder, universal color. You can use it whether to set your concealer foundation or to rely on it for touch-ups throughout the day. The actual compact is a twist off, but what I love here is the groove on the lid that has the spatula here that you would use to take some product. Although, depending on whether you are applying makeup on yourself or on a professional, if on yourself, you can probably just go from pan to skin, but if you are a professional, you will probably use the spatula to scoop, whether on back of your hand or palette, warm up the product and apply on your client. The Blurring Balm Powder was designed to be a no makeup makeup everyday product. Danessa has said that you can use the Blurring Balm Powder as a one and done product for again that no makeup look. If you want more coverage then you can use the Balm Powder as a primer before you apply your foundation. And it was hard for her to describe because there is truly nothing like this on the market based on again the formula description, its role, its versatility, it's multifaceted in terms of how it can be used in your makeup routine but again either as no makeup makeup look light day or primer for more coverage there are 11 shades in all one being the universal shade and the following 10 even though there are only 10 shades this is a light coverage product and very flexible in its shade range meaning that it covers bigger brackets of shades along the skin tone spectrum and why you would see more shades in her yummy skin foundation line which came out a few months back and the whole yummy skin line is very new to the Danessa Myricks brand because she does have her vision cover cream which is waterproof full coverage like whoa and yummy skin was the medium natural finish coverage alongside her serum primer with two shades I believe that are designed to give you that glow and shine juicy skin look. Let's start with shade number five. This is for medium tan skin with golden undertones. And here on the swatch, you see that definitely leans more golden, but just look at the texture from my swatch. It feels so emollient, but again, with the Upsolite technology, it is designed to not look shiny or dewy on the skin. In fact, Danessa had said you can set this product with powder if you wanted, and it will not look textured on the skin, but will remain lightweight and finish. I bought also number six. I feel like I should have purchased number number seven for a more bronze look, but let's see what we got. This is, again, number six, tan skin with neutral undertones. And next to number five, 
definitely more neutral in undertone but maybe i can get away with number six as a bronzer and here are shades five and six side by side this being five this being six so i think yeah six can be a bronzer for me we shall see and these products don't have any fragrance thank you so much the reason why i did not pick up the yummy skin foundation or serum because those products have fragrance and unfortunately right now in the highs of allergy season my allergies are set off with fragrance like you don't even know when i apply my hair products i start sneezing it's really sad but with product details and swatches out the way why don't you come in a little closer <gasps> That's enough. During Danessa's IG Live demo, she used a brush that looked similar to the BK Beauty 101 contour foundation brush. It was a little longer here at the base, but it was an angled brush and she took very little because Danessa emphasized the fact that a little goes a long way. So let's pick up a little bit. I'm so excited. Let's get it on the skin. And she started just to tap we like this color picking up a little bit more bringing it around the face there's there is although there's not the actual fragrance ingredient here on the deck there is ginger root oil i think that's what i'm smelling it's not terrible but not totally fragrance free because of the products so maybe not as fragrant as her yummy skin foundation but there is still a little something in this formula. Went in with a tap more. This is really cool. Incredible how, again, emollient it feels in the pan, but when applied on the skin, it virtually fuses with it. Looks like my skin still appears as my skin. Turning off the light because perhaps you can see the texture more. This is incredible. I knew I would like this product because if you saw my most recent summer skin tutorial, I'm into skin tints now, light complexion products, because as we enter the summer season, I tend to use less foundation. And to have a product like this that provides coverage, but still blurs out imperfections, light on the application, does not feel heavy, but provides an even tone, nice color. Number five is great. It has, again, that golden undertone that gives me a little bit of warmth and doesn't wash me out. And I know it's hard to see on camera. You can feel the product, but it definitely has like a powder feel to it. Wow. Now, I don't have Danessa's Yummy Skin Priming Lotion. It's like a serum that gives a little bit of that golden glow and perhaps a little more dewiness. So I will go in with my Say, which I think is similar in role. But if you're wondering, oh, I applied way too much and just put half of my face. If you're wondering maybe how these two will look together, I wanted to devote one side of my face just to the Blurring Balm Powder, find out how it looks solo, and now we can see how it applies on top of the Say Super Glowy Gel in Sun Glow. In the same fashion, I'll tap directly into the pan and start tapping here on top. Well, that's fantastic. Applying something like the Super Glowy Gel or even the Yummy Skin, I think serves as a great foundation for the blurring powder, especially if you are on the drier side of the spectrum. Danessa did emphasize the fact that this product is ideal for oily skin. She had even said, <laughs> if you were to look up the word oily in Webster, her face will be there. I love her, she's so funny. With all that to say, there were concerns about the drier skin types, right? Okay, well, if it's great for oily skin, will it equally be as great effective on dry skin? I think it will, although a powder, it feels great on the skin. It doesn't suck you dry. And referring back to my notes, Danessa had wanted this product to be a natural matte finish, will not leave you looking dry, to have naturally balanced a soft matte finish on the skin. If you like more dewy, then no matter where you are on the skin type spectrum, this product will not be for you, right? Because the finish has been established, natural, soft matte. If you want the needle to lean more natural, then 
I definitely would recommend you apply a serum like, again, the Yummy Skin or the Say or whatever product you have in your collection currently that is formulated to provide a little bit of dew, maybe some adherence to the powder. But applying my Say first definitely bumps up the glow a little bit, also provides a little more bronzy hue. But by itself, this is incredible. I just love the simple approach fast, easy, tap, and you're ready to go. Using a brush with a wide surface area like the BK Beauty, I think will be your best bet. Maybe something like the Wayne Goss Holiday Brush. This will be great. Although I would probably do a little swirl and twirl you know, I like to buff, it feels nice to do. Let's see how number six looks like a bronzer based on the website photos where it guides you as to which shade you should buy depending on if you wanted something for coverage and or highlight contour. I'll use the same BK Beauty brush. Going into number six now, and pressing that into the hollows. Yeah, I'm happy I got number six, although, Although I think number seven would have been great. This is a, a more subtle serving of bronze, right? I think it's to balance out the complexion. If I wanted a little more warmth here on the parameters of my face, will I get number seven now? Well, I'm so impressed by this product that I probably will. And that is overkill. Yes, I don't need another blurring balm powder just for bronzing sake, but I might just have to do that. Keeping everything within context, I recently also tried the Wayne Goss Luxury Cream Foundation. I think before that it was Suku's Liquid Foundation and NARS Light Reflecting, the Rose Ink Skin Tint. Out of all of those, I am most impressed by this blurring balm powder. It just arrived today, first impressions. Perhaps I am being a prisoner of the moment. The moment is immense in terms of how my expectations were met, especially after seeing her IG Live. The fact that all the points Danessa made about the blurring bomb powder, what to expect from the formula, all boxes were checked off just now. Also, I love the color science because something, a critique people had said about her contour balm is that they ran very warm. Because this product is meant to be stretched along the skin tone spectrum, you can get away with more shade matches with the nature of this product. I wonder if the shades that do have more neutral undertones do actually read more neutral versus warm still, because again, based on the contour balm experience, even the light shades ran more warm than neutral cool. And those who were relying on the bomb contour to create more of a contour versus bronze look, unfortunately could not use that product for their contouring purposes. Danessa also demonstrated using this product under the eyes. I think I'll refrain from buying another balm powder shade for under eye use because I now have my LYS Triple Fix Concealer, which has been great. I, you know, that's totally fine in terms of skipping that for under eye usage. And TN3 matches well with shade five from Yummy Skin Blurring Powder. Excellent. Here are some close-ups and wide shots of the product. Again, I applied shade number five first on one side solo, and on the other side, I applied it on top of the Say Super Glowy Gel in Song Glow, and then I tapped in shade number six into the hollows for a little bit of bronzing. It is now 11.05, and I will head to work to teach, but not only teach, train. So it'll be interesting to see how this keeps up during those uh, types of activities. Because I film with natural light, I might come back on here, whether it be on camera or I'll take photos with my iPhone in front of my glam light, just so you can see how it's been wearing throughout the day. The only regions of my face that I will lightly set will be right here, just under my eyes, and I will leave everything else untouched. I'm dying to apply some Phytosurgeons, but 
I just want to see how everything looks. I think I could get away with some final surgeons though. Hold on. It's interesting because the contouring product also has the word bomb in it, but the blurring bomb powder, I think is a far more sophisticated formula where nearly undetectable when applying it to the skin. The way it blends and just leaves behind the most natural looking finish without overwhelming the complexion, it delivers the perfect amount of sheer coverage while again evening out your skin tone, blurring any imperfections because I have surrendered to the fact that I have blemishes, you might still see them. I don't bother covering them up on photos for Instagram anymore because that's just not reality, okay? I could but I just choose not to. The Balm Contour has a much tighter feel in the formula. You can see there's a little more silkiness and finesse in the Balm Powder instead of the contour. But just out of curiosity, I wanted to tap in Medium 2 very lightly on top of the Balm Powder. And again, despite how much product I have already applied, my skin doesn't feel overwhelmed overly made up everything just blends perfectly together and now applying Phytal Surgeon Skin Spark in Singe because we need to I think I'm gonna be very light in terms of uh the makeup today maybe I'll apply a little bit of mascara we shall see and of course some spectral shine in Dew of Dawn and why not applying singe on my lids because I can. And then some maple magnetic on top of that. And here's a final look with blush, highlighter on, mascara, and some eye products. Hold on, a little bit of lip gloss won't hurt either. Again, this is a first impressions, but I am heavily impressed. Again, just with the alignment of expectation from what I saw on Danessa's demo, what I experienced just now. And while this is a partial experience because a huge component of the blurring bomb powder and its success so far is the fact that you can stay looking soft matte for over several hours. Right now in New York, it's 50 something degrees, let's check is 51 with a dew point of 49, 95% humidity. So although not the warmest right now, you know, maybe I can retest this deep into August when it's terribly hot and humid. I think this is a good starting point. Again, I'll train today. We'll see how it withstands that activity. I'll arrive back home around 6.30 and maybe we'll push the wear until eight o'clock and either photos or shots will be provided just so you can take a look at how the blurring powder stood the test of wear and time. Even though I applied products on top, I think that's a great layer to look after now. We'll see how the Vital Surgeons wears on top of the bomb powder, if the bomb powder has a positive impact on the Vital Surgeons longevity. How does the bomb contour from Danessa's line stay on the bomb powder? So I'm looking forward to check out these markers again as the day goes. But just from this impressions alone, I recommend that you you try this product, especially if you're normal to oily, especially if you're not into complexion makeup like that, you don't wear foundation, you don't even wear tinted moisturizer, but you can get down with the powder that's not necessarily a powder foundation. It's again, its role is unique in that it provides light coverage, it is flexible amongst several skin tones and shades, but it evens out your skin tone, it takes away excess shine, so you don't look dry you just look soft matte and natural and finished there are so many benefits to this powder and like Danessa had said it is unlike anything on the market in terms of the texture how it applies uh, the different roles it could take on in your makeup routine and a huge thank you to her just for carving out the time to share her philosophy her brand knowledge with her audience I think is tremendously advantageous especially if the brand 
brand owner is a makeup artist to showcase their skills so they can fully immerse their audience, their customers in their product technology, in their brand philosophy. And I think that just opens the path for us to better understand where the artist is coming from, why they created such a product, and we can have an even better experience because again, we're on the same page. And as much as I love Pat McGrath, okay, I, I love I love you, mother. I feel she's far away. She's untouchable. Even during the virtual classes that were held over the pandemic, she was there, but her artists were doing all the work. And of course she was commenting and it was fun, it was great. It will be nice to see Pat in action. But again, I know that's a huge ask because she is legendary. To see Pat apply makeup with her products and just to get more insight about why she created what she did, what her perspective is in regards to her, her products and just her makeup technique philosophy, I think will just be otherworldly in her own words. And that's why I appreciate Danessa and her team going on IG, uh, creating all these snippets, just again, to help the customer better understand her products, to better understand her formulas, her brand in general, how all the products work with each other within the brand. So it is fantastic. And again, happy to have caught her Teach Me Tuesdays, which she has every week, by the way. If it's not the blurring bomb powder, it's something else. And what a great opportunity to better understand her makeup products and her makeup technique is all there and she's gonna show you everything. Let me know if you picked up the Blurring Balm Powder from the Yummy Skin line. If you tried the Yummy Skin Foundation and Serum, which again, because they have fragrance, don't know if I could wear it right now. I might hold off on it because Danessa had said, if you wanted more coverage from the Balm Powder, you can use the Balm Powder as a primer and then apply the Yummy Skin Foundation on top or even the Vision Cover. If you want lock proof, coverage, that will be your ideal combination. But because I am just so impressed by the bomb powder, I think I would also love the yummy skin, but holding off on that until I have better fragrance tolerance deeper into the summer. But again, let me know if you pick this up, what you think, what your shade matches are. Let the fam know it down below if, you know, we're trying to figure out which shade we want to get, what your usual foundation shade is, tinted moisturizer, so we can help each other out. I'll see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is... A wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Yummy skin extravaganza. Monthly favorite or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.